everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you want to join the pond, take a dive and hit subscribe. Can you believe it's been a year since my last Miraculous Redesign video? A lot has changed. My intro changed slightly just now. And because this is a bit of a throwback in itself, I also wanted to do a throwback on my intro as well. So let me know which style you prefer. I hit 100k subscribers. I started my own original series inspired by Miraculous Ladybug's Wasted Potential and other magical girl shows I liked. And I went to VidCon for the first time and met a lot of really cool people and made lots of new friends. If you're a bit baffled that I'm doing another miraculous redesign, I completely understand why you would be because I did say this. Will you be making any more redesigns of MLB or other projects? I don't know, I'm kind of done with MLB. It's I, I had fun watching the movie, but I don't think I would ever return to the franchise, especially the series. And I don't care enough about any of the characters to be like, hmm, I can fix that person. Or like, hmm, how do I make this better for no thanks at all? From the show, at least. I don't know. Is that selfish for me <laughs> to say that, oh, I don't want to do this because it doesn't bring me joy? <laughs> And that was mostly because, in case you didn't know, I reviewed the Miraculous Ladybug movie with the artistic Alabelle, and they copyright claimed the whole thing, even though I only used a few short clips that were muted or had my own audio over it, and the rest of it was footage of my own speed draw and bad ladybug cosplay. But it's fine. It's fine, I promise. <laughs> it's not like I still watch the show anyway. And before I get comments about it, no, I have not watched season five. I don't know what's going on and I don't want to know because I don't care if they fixed all the issues I had with the show. It happened too late and I've already lost interest. What can I say? You can't tell someone to go start a show and then tell them, Oh, but it gets good in season 5 after more than 100 episodes and think they'll still want to watch it. People are not going to watch that far unless you're already in too deep to just walk out. But the reason I'm doing this video is because I did promise an epilogue and I get lots of comments of people asking me to redesign Nino. So yeah, let's just dive right into it. First things first, let's talk about his design. First thing I want to say is that Nino arguably has the laziest design in the whole show. I'm sorry, but nothing about his current outfit is cohesive or flattering, just a bunch of clashing colors and designs. And not only do his looks not communicate who he's supposed to be as a person, it actively betrays it. See, Nino in the show is supposed to be a cool, friendly, extroverted guy who uses cool kid lingo and can get along with anyone. He's pretty popular, as in he doesn't get bullied or picked on by the bully characters like Chloe or Kim. And not to mention, he's a DJ and a skater boy too, so you'd think, wow, this guy must be a really cool character who would definitely be a fan favorite. And then you look at him, and you see a kid who looks like he'd be a prime target of bullying. But hey, maybe it's a nice subversion of expectations, I don't know. But given the showrunner's track record for having super outdated fashion senses, they probably based him off of hip-hop guys from the 90s, because that was their definition of cool at the time. <laughs> if you like him, great. Your preferred design is canon, I'm happy for you. But for everyone else, well, this video might be for you. Anyway, the goal here is to get him to look as stylish as his friends and as cool as his personality. There are some aspects of his design I will be preserving though, such as his face shape, which is a very sharp V shape, his big downturned eyes, and especially his nose shape because it's really unique and it shows off his Middle Eastern roots. In case you didn't know, Nino is actually French Moroccan. 
Some of the liberties I took beyond his original design was giving him dimples because I think they would suit him as someone who smiles a lot and curly hair because I think there should be more curly haired characters in Miraculous and I think it will also help give him some much needed volume on the top part of his head because Miraculous is just notorious for having a complete lack of volume on anything aside from their main characters and as things stand, Nino's head proportions portions are very unbalanced so I just wanted to balance that out a bit more because that's something you would do with regular haircuts too you find the one that's most flattering for your face shape and your features and a really popular haircut right now for men is a nice fade and I think it would suit Nino so that was what I did for him it makes sure his hair doesn't get in his way when he's skateboarding but still has some length that lets him show off his curls which means no more hat for him no more hiding, Nino. Another thing I hadn't intentionally changed was taking away his glasses. I just genuinely forgot he wore glasses despite constantly looking at his reference images. In a way, I just thought he would look nicer without it because you can see his big brown eyes better and it helps features like his nose and dimples stand out more. I also completely forgot about his headphones. But that was one character aspect that I wanted to keep, so I added that towards the very end. For his clothes, I wanted to preserve his overall style, but I just updated it to more current trends. I created a mood board for the style I wanted to go for, and as you can see, I mostly took inspiration from skater boys. What's in right now is a lot of oversized clothes. Shirts, pants, and shoes. So most of my redesign is just readjusting the fit of his clothes. I streamlined the design on his shirt and while his shoes were totally fine even in the original, I took some liberties and gave him a new pair as well. Of course, it wouldn't do to leave him unaccessorized, so I decided to keep his little bracelets and gave him a nice necklace to drape over his shirt. I didn't have many gripes about Nino's personality. He's one of the few characters I thought actually acted like a 14 year old boy and he seems to be a well adjusted kid at that, though he does have his moments, like any other teen, who's very sociable and seemingly the complete opposite of Adrian, which is always good. Every extrovert needs an introvert to take under their wing. He's also a good boyfriend to Alia and it's clear how much he admires and respects her given how shy and nervous he gets around her. Like I said in my Alia video, how do you know this isn't the main pairing in a teen girl show? Because it's actually healthy and functional. My goal was to get him to look the way he acts and how his personality is, so I hope I managed to achieve that. But let me know what you think in the comments below. So a recap, because it's been a very long time since I made a Miraculous Ladybug video and I also forgot what I'd written so far. In my version of MLB, the Peacock Miraculous's power changed after Dusu was traumatized by Master Fu's mistake that led to the destruction of his monastery, changing instead to surveillance, the ability to see everything and everywhere the user chooses at once, with the condition that the user must know where it is located and when attempting to spy on a person, must know their appearance. It does not create senti monsters anymore, so in my rewrite, Adrian, Kagami, and Felix cannot be senti monsters. I changed it because I felt it was too similar to the Butterfly Miraculous's power. Also in my rewrite, Chloe's redemption arc was successful. Alia is an anonymous reporter and investigative journalist helping Ladybug find Hawk Moth's whereabouts and undercovering his conspiracies. She is no longer a Miraculous holder herself. The only other people who received Miraculouses from Marinette are Chloe, Luca, Kagami, and Felix. The Miraculous Ladybug damage reversal power requires both Cat Noir and Ladybug to work, destruction to destroy all the rubble, debris, and leftover carnage from the villains, creation to build everything back up again but it does not heal the injured, return the displaced, or cure the people who were devoured or transformed by the akumatized villains. 
So for example, people turned into knights by dark blade would remain knights, and anyone turned into ice cream by glaciator would remain ice cream and melt, as Cat Noir's destruction would kill them, and Ladybug can't use her powers to create new people to replace them. And I did this because I wanted to raise the stakes for the heroes. Ladybug and Cat Noir have a more equal partnership representing order and chaos, creating a balance with each other. Cat Noir is not interested in Ladybug romantically. He finds her to be a stick in the mud at first, though he does eventually warm up to her, and is more concerned about discovering what happened to his mother. Marinette doesn't actually have a crush on Adrian. She just pretends to in order to feel more accepted by her peers. However, she gradually becomes close friends with him through common interests and realizes that she does like him, but only as a friend. Both Marinette and Adrian manage to find meaningful romantic relationships with Luca and Kagami respectively. But while Adrian and Kagami are still together, Marinette and Luca had broken up due to their mutual guilt of keeping secrets from each other. Master Fu makes contact and trains both Ladybug and Cat Noir. Then he dies at the hands of Mayura and the sentient monster he created long ago. Hawk Moth creates an anti-Ladybug society made up of previously akumatized individuals that conspires to put public pressure on Ladybug and Cat Noir to give up their miraculous. The secret top members of said society being Natalie, Felix, and Lila. Lila still becomes Volpina and is a close follower of Hawk Moth's. She used her powers to shapeshift into Ladybug and attack Cat Noir, creating a divide between the two and destroying the French Miraculous team, causing them to resign their positions and return their Miraculouses to Ladybug. With the exception of Luca, who would have returned his Miraculous earlier due to his guilt at keeping secrets from Marinette. Alia stays loyal to Ladybug through this and pledges to continue to help her. Cat Noir is taken to his father's atelier after the attack, where he learns the truth about what happened to his mother. He also learns that Hawk Moth is his father, and agrees to help him get the Ladybug Miraculous to save his mother. Felix is helping Hawk Moth because he thinks that he can resurrect his deceased father, and he manages to trick Marinette into giving him a Miraculous by making her think he was Adrian. He proceeds to steal all the other Miraculous from her. Lila learns that Cat Noir is really Adrian, and filled by guilt, she defects from Hawk Moth and helps Ladybug to defeat him. She steals the Fox Miraculous so that Alia can protect herself as they face off against Felix. Kagami manages to convince Adrian that what Gabriel is doing is wrong, and he steals the Dragon Miraculous for her so she can protect herself. Kagami then uses it to help Ladybug fight Mayura in the final confrontation. Ladybug finally finds Hawk Moth, but she is subdued by his followers, and Cat Noir takes her Miraculous from her. With both the Cat and Ladybug Miraculous in his possession, he wishes to destroy all of the Miraculous. That's all the main points of the rewrite. There's way more that I didn't mention, so feel free to go back and rewatch them if you want to hear me go into way more detail. But now, what happens after, and how does Nino fit in? Well, like Alia, Nino would continue to be a normal civilian. But, because he's supportive of his girlfriend and what she does, I can see him going with her wherever she goes, and perhaps even cover for her when she has to sneak out to capture the action or go into restricted areas. Because Alia doesn't have superpowers like the Miraculous holders do, whenever she needs him, he can get to her quickly on his skateboard. He's still a great friend to Adrian and is probably one of the biggest reasons he manages to adjust to school life and fit in. He wouldn't have been heavily involved in the superhero aspect of the story except through Alia, and he would have mostly been there as an emotional support for both Adrian and Alia. Which ties in nicely to what happens after all the superpowers are gone. Of course, with the destruction of the Miraculous, everything ever created or destroyed by the Miraculous are returned to normal. Which unfortunately means the deaths of the Kwamis. Tiki and Plague would be understanding though. They've been around for a very long time and though their existence had undoubtedly benefited many, in recent years they've brought 
nothing but suffering and discord. They believe it is for the best and they give their respective holders one last farewell before they disappear. The corruption that the butterfly miraculous was causing in Gabriel disappears and he comes to his senses once again to take in everything he's done. Horrified and ashamed, he can't even show his face to Adrian. But Natalie convinces Gabriel to face him, as it may be his last chance to do so. Gabriel realizes what this means, and so he finally faces Adrian and for the first time, speaks sincerely to him to apologize for everything he's done, for being a horrible father to him, for his lying, his selfishness, and his neglect, and for putting him through everything that he has. Adrian doesn't forgive him, which crushes Gabriel. But after a moment, Adrian adds that maybe one day he will, once Gabriel has proven that he's worthy of his forgiveness. Natalie gives Adrian one last hug and then takes Gabriel by the arm to face police arrest together. The people still afflicted by akumatized villains become normal humans again, and certain members of the anti-ladybug society that were once akumatized were also arrested. Medics were able to examine Emily and find that she unfortunately no longer has any brain activity, and after court consideration, they finally let her rest. Marinette and Adrian finally learn of each other's true identities and realize that they've been close all this time and come to appreciate each other even more. Alia, Marinette, Adrian, Kagami, Chloe, and Luca receive medals from the mayor for their heroic deeds in times of crisis, while Lila and Felix receive disciplinary measures for their involvement with Hawk Moth. Possibly suspension from school and house arrest for Felix and community service, but also school suspension for Lila. Marinette finally comes clean to Luca about everything. And without any other secrets between them, they reunite as a couple. Of course, Adrian is now left without any guardians to look after him. And with all his father's assets being confiscated, he has nowhere to go either. At risk of being taken into government custody, Marinette convinces her parents to take Adrian in because all this time, he's always been her brother in arms. They understand the unique experience of being chosen as miraculous holders, they argue and fight, they get on each other's nerves, but no matter how bad it got, they always had each other's backs. We zoom out and find that all these moments of everything that had happened so far were all documented in a scrapbook by Marinette and Adrian, as they flipped through the pages together in the, in the Dupen Chang household, with Marinette's parents sitting nearby, listening to their stories. The series ends with Marinette finally feeling accepted for who she is, without lies or pretenses, and Adrian finally having a loving family, and a life where he can choose who he wants to be. And that's the end. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and hanging out in my channel for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. I want to give a shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon for supporting me and my channel. If you want to see more from me, then follow me on all my social media. If you want to chat with me or send me fan art, join my Discord server. Check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in the description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!